What is going on world? What's up YouTube? It's Zero here. Today I'm bringing you guys a brand new episode of the 8 Below Show. Welcome everyone to 8 Below. Thanks for being here guys to the best gaming related show here on YouTube. And I'm super excited about our episode here today. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. So let's get into it. A franchise that we never got a continuation of, but a franchise I would have loved to see a continuation of is Prey. This is a franchise, guys, and really just one game, so I guess you can't really call it a franchise because we've only got one sample size and one game to go by. Guys, Prey was a game that came out in 2017 and had a lot of real possibility with it. I thought that it was a great game that was brought out, of course, by Bethesda as the publisher and developed by Arcane Studios. And it's really strange that we haven't seen a Prey 2. And so I want to talk about where is Prey 2 at this point and could we potentially see a sequel at some point or another in the future. So let's talk about it. So as I said, guys, this game came out in 2017. And look, if you're a fan of this game, it was a pretty exciting uh, game, to, to to say the least, guys. From the critical reception of, of this game, Prey received generally favorable reviews from critics, according to review aggregator Metacritic. According to Metacritic, guys, the Metacritic scores were 82 out of 100 for PC, PS4 was 79 out of 100, and Xbox One was 84 out of 100. Critics praised the fully realized atmosphere of Talos One, with some labeling it a luxurious sci-fi playground. On the other hand, combat prov proved divisive. GameSpot's Tamor Hussein found fight sequences rewarding, while IGN's Dan Stapleton considered combat prey's biggest weakness, partly due to periods of AI unresponsiveness. Concerning the story, GameSpot found protagonist Morgan Yu's journey somewhat thin, and trusted reviews called the storyline lacking. So look, overall guys, there were things about this game that were certainly divisive. I would have to say that the biggest thing in my opinion was the combat. People just didn't really seem to enjoy it that much. I thought it was okay. I wouldn't say it was one of the best, but I thought it was an okay experience. Look, Game Informer gave it an 8.25 out of 10. Uh, GameSpot gave it a 6 out of 10, IGN an 8 out of 10, and then PC Gamer gave it gave it a 79 out of 100. So look, at the end of the day, it got decent reviews. Obviously, you know, better than average reviews. I mean, I would say that they were generally favorable, but there was a lot of people stating that it just wasn't uh, good, good enough from a combat perspective. Now, as far as the sales go, that's really the big thing that Bethesda is going to be looking at at this point. They're going to be looking at, like, the sales for the game. Does it justify a sequel? And they also go by critical reception, guys, but it's more so the sales. At the end of the day, it's all about money to these companies. So, Prey debuted at number two on the weekly sales charts in the United Kingdom, trailing the Nintendo Switch port of Mario Kart 8. These Figures were considered disappointing due to a lack of competition from AAA new releases and the fact that the opening week sales were 60% down from Arcane's previous title, Dishonored 2. Additionally, Bethesda's decision to hold review copies until the official release date was mentioned by outlets as a factor for the week launch. However, Prey captured the top spot in its second week of release, besting Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, a rise partially attributed to the positive reception the game received from critics, though sales were down 32% from its debut week. In doing so, Prey became the first Bethesda game since 2016's Doom to reach number one on the United Kingdom weekly sales charts. And then in Japan, Prey debuted at number five on the weekly sales charts when it released in late May, with 7,105 copies sold for the PlayStation 4. However, the Xbox One version did not make the charts. So, Kind of like some red flags there, obviously uh, not even making the charge for Xbox One. That's kind of usually not a good sign, guys. But all in all, it still sold well enough, in my opinion, to, to kind of warrant a sequel. And so, Prey 2 was a game, guys, that was going to come out. It got greenlit, and then, of course, it ended up uh, getting canceled, ultimately, guys. So, it was canceled, and maybe it was just too soon. I don't know exactly what... The real reasoning, if it was just too soon or if it was, you know, just something that the the sales weren't good enough for the first game. But all in all, guys, Prey 2 was a canceled first-person shooter video game to be published by Bethesda Softworks and planned as a sequel of the 2006 video game Prey. 
Though Prey 2 was announced by 3D Realms in 2006, a few months after release of the first game, development work at Human Head Studios did not begin in earnest until 2009 after the rights for Prey had transferred from 3D Realms ultimately to ZeniMax Media, the parent company of Bethesda. Bethesda formally announced their title in early 2011, which revealed a change of the player's main character and of gameplay to a more open world game. Human Head quietly sees development on the game in, in late 2011 for unstated reasons despite having progressed to a near alpha release date. Subsequently, several industrial rumors circulated that Prey 2 had been canceled or changed developers, including evidence that Arcane Studios had taken over development. Bethesda formally canceled the game in 2014, stating it was not meeting their expectations. Then later in 2016, Bethesda announced that a reboot of the franchise Prey was set for release in 2017 and was under development by Arcane, who had taken the concepts and thematic elements of Prey, but scrapped any previous work that had been done by Human Head. So what does that tell you guys? Obviously, there's been some issues. Uh, there, without a doubt, were some issues there between the developer and the publisher uh, not really meeting eye to eye. I think it was more just maybe, you know, kind of a collision of creative minds trying to figure out where they wanted to take the, the franchise. Because at the end of the day, guys, I really think that Prey has something special going on. I really do. This definitely warrants at least a sequel and maybe even a, a three-part trilogy at least. I don't think it should just be a standalone game by itself. In October 2014, during PAX Australia... Bethesda officially canceled Prey 2. Hines stated it was a game we believed in, but we never felt that it got to where it needed to be. We never saw a path to success if we finished it. It wasn't up to our quality standard, and we decided to cancel it. It's no longer in development. That wasn't an easy decision, but it's one that won't surprise many folks given that we hadn't been talking about it. Human Head Studios is no longer working on it. It's a franchise, and we still believe we can do something with, we just need to see what that something is. Tim Gerritsen, the business development director of Human Head Studio, said, while we are disappointed that we won't be able to deliver our vision of the game, we remain proud of our work on the franchise, which we feel speaks for itself, including the award-winning presentation of the game at E3 2011. We enjoyed working with the many talented people at Bethesda, and we wish them all the best of luck with any future plans they have for the franchise. And I guarantee you guys had something to do with probably Bethesda was, you know, obviously the overseeing, you know, power that was probably telling Human Head, we got to get these things made and, and finished in a timely manner. And Human Head just wasn't able to do it. Or there was collisions of creative minds. There's a lot of stuff that can go into, obviously, guys, the reasoning for a project that's being canceled. However, Bethesda announced at the press conference at the Electronic Expo uh, Entertainment Expo 2016 in June that they would be publishing a reboot of Prey, also titled Prey to be developed by Arcane Studios. This game will not use any of the materials developed for Prey 2 outside of the IP and the franchise concepts. Arcane Studios CEO and director Rafael Colantonio said that at the time of completing Dishonored, they sought to do a second project alongside Dishonored 2, one that was in first person with depth and simulation and narration, and that they opted to use the Prey narrative as it matched these thematic elements well, but otherwise greatly different in gameplay. Hines added that when considering the core concept of the original 2006 Prey was about aliens chasing after the player character, they felt the name worked well for the game that Arcane had pitched, and they did not have to be beholden to retain anything else about the original game. This gave Arcane's team the freedom it needed to do uh, to complete their game without needing to consider the franchise's past history. So I think at this point, guys, what we can all agree on is that this is a game that very well still might be ma being made. Prey 2 really could, at this point, still be in development. Haven't heard much about it. You know, there's been a lot of talk of cancellations and, and things of that nature. And then, of course, reboots. And, and so, ultimately, guys, we don't really know. All we do know is that Bethesda is talking about it, and they have talked about it. We've got Arcane Studios still talking about it. I think this is a project that they really enjoy as well, an IP that they, they really cherish, along with their Dishonored franchise. Franchise. So I think that they definitely want to continue Prey. It's just how they do that, and they're probably just going to take their time with this project. But I don't think, guys, that it's all doom and gloom for Prey. I believe personally that this is a franchise that is definitely going to be coming out in the future. I think that there is a fan base for this game. 
without a doubt. I thought it was actually a really underrated experience, in my opinion. I thought it was pretty, it was, there was definitely some, some very freaky moments in the game. I thought it was actually a pretty good shooter. I know that some of the combat was kind of, you know, kind of wacky at times, but at the same time, guys, it's the first game in this, in this hopeful franchise. And so, look, you, sometimes you do got to get it right, but a lot of times you just got to get the concepts right. You got to get the the story and you got to get those things right to bring people back to the franchise. And I think they did enough of that to to warrant a sequel. So at this point, guys, we don't know really much else if Prey 2 is actually in development or if it's completely canceled, if it's in a hiatus state. We don't really know, guys. All we do know is that Arcane, uh, Arcane Studios, as well as Bethesda, have mentioned you know, talks of Prey 2. And that, guys, is very reassuring. If you're a massive Prey fan, we very well might be seeing a Prey 2 in the foreseeable future. But let me know what you guys think. What would you guys want to see different and similar to Prey 1 uh, in Prey 2? Let me know in the comment section below. And for me, guys, what the things that I want to see, I obviously want to see kind of more of the same, just Obviously, updating, you know, the combat mechanics and, and things of that nature and some of the AI, um, you know, and, and what the AI does. And obviously, you know, improving on the multiplayer experiences and adding, like, co-op experiences. More and more ways that you can connect with the franchise is absolutely what I want uh, for this franchise. But let me know, like I said, guys, what you want to see in this franchise moving forward. And for more Prey 2 content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. A game that I feel, guys, has a lot of potential, and really I should say a franchise that has a lot of potential, is Rage. And this is a franchise, guys, that, in my opinion, has a very immersive world, has some really cool elements to it, kind of feels a little bit like a, a Fallout game. It's got some, it kind of takes things from other games, feels like somewhat like Mad Max kind of vibes to it as well. And I want to talk about Rage 2 in this segment of the show and why there isn't a multiplayer and, and will we ever see a multiplayer for Rage 2 or for future installments in the Rage uh, franchise? Let's talk about it. Guys, in an article that was written by Ali Jones of PC Games, Rage 2 will not have multiplayer. In an interview with PCGN, ID Software Studio Director Tim Willits said that the sheer scope of the game's single-player experience discouraged the Rage 2 team from expanding it into multiplayer. Willits stated that right now we are focusing on just the single player because the game is so damn big. In a separate interview, Avalanche Studio Creative Director Magnus Nedfors said there would be no multiplayer as we are focusing on making the best single player story we can. There will, however, be a life for Rage 2 beyond the initial release of the game. Willits confirmed that we have some things that we are working on to extend the life of the product, stating that we want to extend the life of our games to engage our players, to provide updates and things to them. That could have an impact on Doom, for example, assuming Willits means that other ID games will receive the same treatment he mentioned for Rage 2. So look, Rage 2, guys, uh, at this point has not added any multiplayer. And sure, they've maybe added like little, you know, obviously like DLC and things of that nature, but haven't really added anything of major significance that's going to bring lots of people back to Rage 2 for long extended periods of time. Look, and, and to say that the game is, is so damn big, okay, I mean, you got to pump the brakes on that. Sure, it's an open world experience, but like, there isn't, you know, that much to do. Like, I mean, you know, you got the main experience, which is the single player experience. You got side missions, things of that nature, similar to many other, uh, you know, to a lot of other games out there, guys. I mean, I'll give you an example, like God of War, okay? You've got side missions, you got your main missions, but no multiplayer experience is going to essentially, guys, in my personal opinion, a game like Rage it needs multiplayer because it looks like it's primed for a multiplayer experience. And look, you don't really want a lot of people to play the single player experience once or twice, which is what I do. I'll play it one time on a regular or casual difficulty and try to enjoy the experience. I play it a second time on a harder difficulty, trying to get all the collectibles and things of that nature that second time around. But then after that, I move on to another game if there isn't other things to keep me coming back to the franchise, that being like multiplayer and co-op modes. So what I'm getting at is, sure, it's a big game, guys, and I, and I think that there's 
a real argument to be had that this is a game that uh, definitely has uh, a really um, immersive world, but at the same time, there's portions of it that are, you know, kind of, kind of dull, kind of, you know, just not, not that, uh, not that great of an experience, I guess you could say, in my personal opinion, but a multiplayer experience would certainly bring people, uh, coming back to playing this game. I mean, look, when you think about it, you you think about Doom. Let's just say Doom, for example, or, you know, we could probably talk about a multitude of other Bethesda games, but we could just talk about Doom. You look at Doom and the success it's had with the single-player experience, which was great in Doom 2016, and then, but they also had other modes to come back to that you could actually just, you know, you and you see that fan base is starting to flourish. Now with Doom Eternal, I mean, people are talking about it's one of the best FPSs ever made, and... Well, that's not just because of a campaign. Sure, it has a great campaign, but it's also got, you know, a pretty cool multiplayer experience that's different in the form of battle mode. It has other ways you can connect with the franchise, and now you see a flourishing community and a game that now looks like it's going to be good to go for the foreseeable future. Rage, I just don't know if there's going to be a big future here if they don't expand to other game modes, in my personal opinion. Having a free-to-play multiplayer experience for Rage 2, I think, would be absolutely huge. Think about Call of Duty with Warzone. They bring out Warzone, this Battle Royale mode, that ends up being free-to-play for everyone, and it's absolutely blowing up on the charts as far as, like, on Twitch and YouTube and all these different places as far as viewership is concerned, and then, of course, concurrent viewers or players as well. Rage, at this point, does not have a very strong... Um, you know, viewership following when it comes to on Twitch and on other, you know, platforms, even on YouTube, guys. There's not like a ton of content creators who are just doing content around Rage. And I think the reason is, guys, is because there's just not enough to actually create content around. That being like, you know, having a multiplayer experience, co-op experiences, at least consistent DLC would be nice to have free DLC with Rage 2. Uh, that, you know, after you buy the initial product, you're consistently getting other, you know, you know, other experiences within the game. I totally get why developers do that, but even a game like God of War, I've said this on multiple occasions, it really bothered me that there weren't other things to do after that single player experience. It feels like you're, you're paying, you know, $60 for just a single player experience. That's like paying $60 just for a multiplayer experience or $60 just for a co-op experience. I just think that these games need to be like more of a full package. And I think Rage 2 has so much potential to be a huge franchise. I really do, guys. I believe that 100%. I believe that with all the different cosmetics and the things that you could do with a multiplayer, like customizing your characters and things of that nature, I really think they would have something special there. But... Ultimately, they have no plans of doing that, and I'm hoping if they make a Rage 3 and uh, Rage 3 is greenlit, which I don't know if that's going to happen, guys, because, you know, at the end of the day, it comes down to, to sales and things of that nature, and Bethesda might say, you know what, we're going to skip out on Rage 3, we're going to work on, you know, another Doom game. Elder Scrolls, another even maybe Fallout, and some of these other titles, guys, that... I mean, that, that there's more of a full package. I mean, even a game like Prey, which we just talked about in the last segment of the show, that is a game that had a multiplayer experience as well as a single-player experience. So you have multiple ways to connect with that franchise. And now we're talking about, you know, the Prey 2 that got greenlit, then it got canceled, then rebooted, then canceled, and all kinds of things going on there. But that's a franchise that may actually have an opportunity to actually grow its community substantially because of having other modes other than just a single player experience. But let me know what you guys think. Do you guys want to see a Rage 2 multiplayer? Will we see a multiplayer at some point or another for Rage 2 or for Rage 3? Let me know what you guys think. I would love to have a conversation about it. And for more Rage 2 content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. Gears of War, guys, has been, it's been very much so recorded here on the YouTube channel as being one of the big three, in my opinion, in all of gaming, that being, uh, it's one of the big three, that being Call of Duty, StarCraft, and Gears of War, and so you guys know that this is a, a franchise I'm passionate about, and I want to talk about Gears 6 and why it should exist, so let's talk about it. So guys, 
Gears of War at this point has had a number of peaks and valleys, and I think we can all agree uh, with that statement at this point. Look, Gear 6, Gear 7, and a Gears of War movie have all been confirmed by Rod Ferguson. You guys can check out that video on the YouTube channel that we've already talked about, about uh, Gear 6 and a Gear 7 being confirmed, as well as a movie by none other than the studio head of the coalition at the time was Rod Ferguson. Now, there's a lot of question marks around Gears of War at this point because of, well, Rod Ferguson leaving, number one, would be him leaving to seek kind of new ventures, that being in the form of Diablo and the Diablo franchise over at Blizzard. And then on top of that, guys, there's been a number of other members of the Coalition that have been there since, of course, pretty much the beginning of when the Coalition was formed and we had, you know, uh, Gears of War's Ultimate Edition to now. And a lot of those guys are, are leaving for other, you know, other ventures. Seems like maybe Rod Ferguson was the first, you know, the beginning of... Uh, what is now like just a kind of uh, a funnel of a lot of other people leaving the coalition to go to other other projects and you know all the power to them for doing those things you know if you've been working on the same title for so long there comes a point where there's a breaking point right and that happens with pretty much any industry uh, whatsoever so gear six guys let's just say it's confirmed at this point right by rod ferguson what I'll say is, is why is this a franchise that deserves to continue? Why should Gears 6 exist? Here's why. Gears 5 guys came up with some really cool ideas. Did all of them land perfectly? Absolutely not. There was, you know, any game is going to have its problems. Any franchise that's been going on for a number of years is going to have its ups and downs, its peaks and valleys. And Gears of War is no stranger to that, as well as any other franchise. You look at Call of Duty, it's had its peaks and valleys in significant ways, guys. Gears of War is one of the staples of gaming. It is one of like the biggest staples of all of, you know, when we talk about Xbox as a as a console, this is one of the staples. I mean, I believe it's probably, you know, in the big three of the staple games of Xbox. And I mean, you know, really, when you think about it, you could have said that like maybe Fable was one of those as well as Halo and Gears of War. But even Fable has kind of been pushed to the wayside for so long. They kind of have Halo and Gears are the two staples of Xbox at this point. Now, of course, guys, there's going to be, you know, room for debate about that. But I just think that when you talk about just how long these franchises franchises have been going on, the amount of the pure amount of of sales they've had and success that they have had, there's really no debate about it. However, with the community and how the community has reacted to the coalition, some of the decisions that have been made behind the scenes with the coalition and with Gears of War and Gears 5 in particular, there's no real guarantees now. Rod Ferguson said that Gear 6 and Gear 7, as well as a Gears of War movie, were confirmed. However, now that he's gone, we haven't heard anyone else say from, you know, Microsoft or from the Coalition that Gear 6 is still going to happen. I will say, though, that it deserves and, it, you know, why it should exist is not only because it's a staple for gaming as a whole, it is a signature staple for Xbox. And it's, you know, look, it really brought to light the Xbox Game Pass, which I believe is one of the best inventions in all of gaming at this point, for at least console-wise. It is incredible. Xbox Game Pass, guys, has, is a game changer, and I believe PlayStation is going to be following suit, as well as Nintendo, um, so on and so forth. I believe that there is, what Xbox is doing right now is they're building this infrastructure for all of their, you know, IP games and, you know, their ex Xbox exclusives that are going to be coming out and they're going to be specific to the Xbox Game Pass and, of course, you'll be able to buy physical copies, but I think more and more people are just going to be buying those, that Xbox Game Pass subscription and that way you can just play as many of those games each month as you want and it's just, it's just a infrastructure and a business model that I think is going to work down the road. Now, so Gears 5 kind of started that, really brought it to light, and I think the next big thing, I mean, you could even argue that Gears of War, that came out with the Xbox 360 as a launch title, 
was kind of like a, a, a beginning ground, a, a real uh, a great start for Xbox 360. Lots of people that bought Xbox 360 also got Gears of War. I'm one of those people. And that's how we got it, like incorporated and in, in, in really got started with the Xbox 360, which was with, with Gears of War. And so when you think about it, this spans all of these years, right? From 360 to the Xbox One, now to the Xbox Series X. Where's the future going? And Gear 6, guys, I think what the Coalition's doing is, look, we can compare it to, to other franchises. I can compare it to, like, what happened with 343 Industries, the ones that have been created Halo 5 Guardians, and now we're doing Halo Infinite. What happened with them was they kind of took the reins from Bungie, right? After Bungie split ways with Microsoft, wanted to do their own thing, and then they were working on Destiny with Activision. So 343 Industries, they had one game under their belt, got a ton of backlash, right, with Halo 5 Guardians. So now they kind of are starting to figure things out. So that's why I believe Halo Infinite is going to be a smash hit for 343 Industries. It's going to bring Halo back 100%. They kind of figured out what they did right, wrong, and what they can do different moving forward. A lot of times, though, guys, these developers need a little bit of some time to kind of get their ground in these very established franchises. The Coalition is, is similar to this. I mean, they came in with Gears of War Ultimate Edition, which I thought was pretty good for what it was. Kind of got their feet wet. Then they got to Gears 4. I thought that was, I thought Gears 4 was pretty good. Didn't really like the story as much, but I thought that the multiplayer experience was great and everything else that they were doing was great. And then Gears 5 was another step in the right direction, in my opinion, going to a semi open world campaign on top of more ways than ever to connect with Gears of War. That being, you know, of course, Horde mode, but even like the multiplayer modes as well as, you know, the escape mode. And then they're consistently trying to update the game to make it better and trying to listen to the community as much as they possibly can. So what does this mean? Well, what this means, guys, is that Gears 5 did really good from a scale of just... I mean, from the sales perspective, it really brought a lot of light to Xbox Game Pass, and so it sold very well. On top of that, the story is obviously continuing. You know, Kate Diaz now has those reins, and she's kind of moving the story forward. And I believe that we are going to see a Gear 6 as well as a Gear 7 in the future. They deserve to exist being not only staples of gaming, but also a staple of Xbox. It's also that this story is far from over, in my opinion, and I think that there's a lot more story left to be told, as well as with Gears Tactics tactics launching amongst, you know, look, I mean, more ways than ever that you can connect with this franchise. What do I always talk about on this, uh, talk about on this YouTube channel, guys? Having full package deal games is the best part of gaming. Not just having a single player story to play and then you're done, you go on to another game. Not having just a co-op mode where you play with your friends but nothing else. Not just having a multiplayer experience where all you do is multiplayer. It's having all of it in one. It's the best of all of those worlds. Gears of War has that. Call of Duty has that. StarCraft has that. I mean, there's a number of games that have that, but a lot of games have it, but haven't been able to sustain it over a long period of time. Similar to Gears of War. Gears of War is a special franchise, guys. We cannot let Gears of War die. And I don't think Microsoft is going to allow it to happen. Like, let's just say the coalition, all the, all the people working for the coalition decide, oh, we're all going to start working on other games and things of that nature. Microsoft's going to hire another development team to work on Gears of War because it's such a staple of gaming. And they know that. And it's also, I mean, they it makes them a lot of money as well. Now, is it as much as like maybe some of the other games like Call of Duty? No, but it's still going to make Microsoft a lot of money money in the long run because it's an Xbox exclusive and they're trying more now than ever to build their Xbox exclusives to a significant uh, point. So Gear 6, guys, I believe it needs to happen. I believe that it needs to exist in gaming as a whole, but also because there's so much more story left to be told. I want to see a continuation of it, whether you're talking from the perspective of Kate Diaz or if we go back to, you know, taking the reins with Marcus Phoenix or JD, if maybe he comes back and is a part of canon and, uh, you know, uh, so many things, guys, that I think need to happen in Gears of War. 
and it it's got like such a dark gritty but it's uh kind of story but it's got so much heart as well so much of that like you know that camaraderie that you know uh there's just so much in it guys that hits so many different emotions and it just deserves to continue and i've said it about like starcraft i mean i think starcraft 3 guys you know on the youtube channel i've talked about starcraft 3 on a number of occasions that this is a game that needs to be made to continue the starcraft legacy um gears of war is like that i mean i just think that it needs to continue we all know that call of duty they've made a ton of call of duty games and they make them every year and you guys know how big Call of Duty is. I mean, it's the I mean, every year it's the best-selling game every single year. That tells you something. Gears of War, guys, is kind of like a Call of Duty but just on Xbox. So it's like on a much smaller scale. It's like any Gears of War game that comes out, the community's gonna show up and is going to play it, regardless of whether you're talking about Gears of War 3, which I thought was the prime of this franchise. Or if you're talking about Gears of War Judgment, which I thought was the 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 downfall, the the dark ages of Gears of War, the community showed up for that, regardless of what it was, to check it out at least. And the community's going to do that for Gears Tactics, it's going to do it for Gears 6, it'll do it for Gears 7, it'll go to the movies to watch a Gears of War film. Guys, all in all, Gears of War deserves to continue. It's a, th this is a staple in gaming. And I want to hear your guys' thoughts on it. Let me know in the comment section below what your guys' thoughts on it. Do you want to see a Gears 6 at this point? Why do you think it should exist or why you think it shouldn't exist? Let me know what you guys think. And for more Gear 6 content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. And with that being said, everyone, I hope you guys did enjoy this episode of The 8 Below Show. And if you guys did, leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, stay positive. And as always, I'll talk to you guys all in the next one. Peace.